I began looking for answers. But soon I couldn't get the images I'd seen out of my head. And it was clear that their world was becoming mine. Bad dream, hun? Diablo 2. Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, you're going to hell. I'm going to hell. We're all going to hell. No, it has nothing to do with the fact that you have yet to admit that Knights of the Republic is the best video game ever made. We'll let that be in the past. You're going to hell because Diablo 4 is coming out. What, what did you think I was talking about, for God's sakes? Diablo 4 is here. If you pre-ordered the game, you can already access it. And for those of us who want to wait a little bit, it's coming out on the 6th of June. Now, ever since I touched the beta, I was like, yo, I am all in on this game. I always enjoyed a little bit of Diablo because I grew up on action RPGs like Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance, Champions Return to Arms. Those are my Diablo games. I was even late to Diablo 3 after seeing, you know, the, the launch cycle with all the network problems and we'll see how it goes here with Diablo 4. I'm not holding my breath, but certainly I am excited because the beta was extremely convincing i love me a good action rpg even to torchlight 2 which i remember playing on my switch like these games just can scratch a particular itch but in my opinion when i went into diablo 3 i said no one's doing it better than this game right here and i felt that same energy in diablo 4 so i'm excited and because i'm excited i wanted to go back to all three of the diablo games we don't count immortal here okay what you got a problem blizzard what, you don't got cell phones? Get out of here with that garbage, man. That game's awful. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome one, welcome all. If you're new here, you're into nostalgic and retrospective content, consider subscribing. For a lot of you who are around my age, this will be an interesting deep dive because I don't see many people talking about Diablo 1, considering, you know, the game came out in 97, that was two years after my birth, and then in 98, EA, of all companies, you'll see here with this old Electronic Arts logo, published the PlayStation version, the two-player PlayStation version. Not a cheap game. And I don't say that as a flex, I say that because this, I may as well have took $120 and lit it on fire, because I played for 15, 20 minutes, it's like, wow, this is really difficult, and I think I will never beat this game, and this will just remain on the shelf, probably. But for all of you out there, I wanted to make sure I had a unique, complete and box experience. And speaking of unique, we have probably one of our best ever here in Diablo 2 on PC. I cannot wait to show you all what's inside here. But anyway, the back of the box for Diablo 1 gets a four and a half out of five from PSM Magazine. It says, join a companion on a quest to defeat Diablo's Dark Hordes. Fight back to back with sword and sorcery, storm dungeon labyrinths as warrior, rogue, or sorcerer, gaining power with every enemy slaughtered. There can be no peace until Diablo, the lord of all evil, is defeated. Unite to destroy Diablo with two-player hack and slash action, three unique characters to develop, each with their own abilities, over 20 powerful spells, and 300 magical artifacts, over 100 gruesome monsters to slay, and 16 randomly generated labyrinths that are different every day time now on the inside prepare your eyeballs because the most bold red of all time is about to grace your eye and it is uh, you'll see when we open the manual it's it's illustration if you will to a fault you'll see what i mean i like how the manual and the disc kind of connect here thought this was really cool awesome disc art though we rarely get to open up ps1 games here so let's enjoy this while we can now we have the manual here and are you ready for the reddest of red Look at that, it's practically illegible because the text is black. It fits the game, but it's so hard to read. Anyway, they break down the controls as always to open things up, you know, the, these action games and whatnot. We're still finding their footing at this point in time. Uh, they break down how you begin the game in a small town of Tristram, which, uh, which I thought was pretty cool because you see new Tristram in uh, Diablo 3, which Again, to me, I, I I never, you know, again, I, this was two years after I was born. You're going to have to excuse me for not knowing Jack Diddley do about these games. Uh, but this was, to me, one of those cool revelations where I went, oh, there's a little, little connection here. Uh, continuing on, they go through the game start screen. Afterwards, they break down each of the classes, the warrior and his ability, which is to uh, be able to repair his items on the run. And then you'll also see uh, the, the rogue, the sorcerer, and then there was an expansion called Hellfire, which eventually brought the monk in, uh, which was around the same time that the PS1 version had launched. So there were four classes in total in Diablo 1 once it was all said and done. 
And then it walks you through interacting with the townspeople, the artisans and merchants. And you'll see a lot of this is very familiar even to today's modern games, which I thought was cool. Uh, they got nice little illustrations here. Wait till you see them in the Diablo 2 manual. It's insane. Uh, I'm very excited to show that one off. And then uh, casting spells, how that works, how, how magic works. We'd love to see all that. They break down some of the enemies here in the corners of the manual. The inventory still looks pretty familiar, pretty accessible. How to use new weapons and armor, because I mean, again, this was kind of new for its time, and it was especially transformative, because as we get to the end of the manual here, credits, and then that's really it. Uh, because it was originally a, a point-and-click kind of game when it came to navigating, so bringing it to PS1 and making it console compatible was a, a pretty noteworthy feat back then. Uh, but Diablo 1, what else can I say about it other than, again, I'm gonna drop the phrase that I think makes every gamer with a slight ego cringe a bit. Wow, this game is difficult. Oh, wow. I popped into the first dungeon. I'm like, okay, it's a church, beginner area. I'm the, I'm the warrior. <laughs> you know, there's nothing that can stop me. And I'm rinsing this dungeon pretty well. And then I run into our first devil and uh, this guy destroyed me. Uh, you, like, when you get hit, your character staggers, and uh, yeah, this game is tough as nails. I mean, practically felt unbeatable as I retried with different classes, took different approaches, in and out of the dungeon I went, trying to grind, uh, because the dungeons in this world are, as you'd expect in Diablo 1 and 2, uh, procedurally generated, and so, uh, yeah, it's just, you're not gonna have, like, one perfect run. But I can imagine back then, in the days of no internet, how this would probably be one of the most rewarding experiences to conquer. Because for me, one of those experiences, while it's not nearly as difficult, I imagine, was Mega Man X Command Mission. I remember going over to my friend's house constantly for this game, and we would fight the same boss over and over and over. Obviously, we were super young. Obviously, we were missing something. But it felt like this force of nature we could just never conquer. And once you finally got over it, it was an incredible feeling and it solidified itself as one of my favorite games growing up, even though I have yet to beat the game, which is kind of hilarious. But Diablo 1 was that type of game I could see, especially the two-player action. It, you know, I grew up with Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance where I remember we had to cheese some bosses. You had to do everything to survive. The saves are unforgiving back then. There's only a limited amount of walkthroughs, strategy guides, that type of stuff where to me, that kind of difficulty, especially in that era, while it wasn't phenomenally balanced, uh, speaks to a time that I think I'm at, I imagine a lot of people may remember fondly. But yeah, for me as someone playing it for the first time in 2023, nope doubt. I was like, yeah, this, this game is gonna smoke me constantly and it's frustrating. But what I liked again was seeing all of the core of Diablo still in Diablo 4 in Diablo 3, uh, right here from the first game, uh, which I sometimes see as series grow more and more popular. They depart from where they started. So I liked seeing all those pieces, you know, starting in the small town, uh, the way you interact with all these different NPCs, the, the merchants, the loot focus, et cetera, et cetera. And also uh, the way that dialogue is delivered with these long scroll boxes. You'll even see a little loading icon on the bottom right corner for a disc when you want to start a conversation, when you want to open up your inventory. It's not Fable 3 type loading, but it's still pretty intense. So I thought this was a cool little trip back to the past. Is it one I'd recommend you get in your collection? I don't know, friends. I, I really just, it's difficult and it's really expensive. Maybe if you're really a masochist, you may enjoy it. Well, let's get into this one here, Diablo 2. Ladies and gentlemen, this is definitely one of the best complete box experiences we will do here on this channel. I am very excited about it. Starting things off, we open up the front panel here. Vengeance was only the beginning. The sequel to the game of the year, where you see the Amazon, the Necromancer, the Paladin, the Sorceress, as well as the Barbarian here. Uh, so alrighty, we're, we're setting the tone right. Then, on the back, it says, Evil has survived. Five bold new character classes, Battle Hell's minions as the Amazon, Sorceress, Necromancer, Paladin, or Barbarian, each with unique skills and abilities, with powerful new weapons and magic. Summon and command nightmarish creatures, harness the elemental powers of nature, and master the energies of light and darkness through arcane spells and enchantments. Fiendishly enhanced multiplayer, advanced battle net technology unleashes support for up to eight players, something that we see now in the, the Resurrected uh, remaster, which is pretty cool, including multiplayer quests and player ranking systems, and four expansive realms to wander about. But really what I want to get into with this one is the manual. And it's actually going to be black and white, but it's 
it's a shocking amount of detail. But also, since there's so many people who are like the PC master race, I think some of the, the troubleshooting you'll see in here is pretty funny. First, uh, remember when we had to use discs for PC games? Check that out. There's a play disc, there's a cinematics disc. How awesome is that? So, we have that here. On the back it says evil has survived, it goes through a lot of the, the imagery that you already saw. Uh, the troubleshooting is hilarious because one that stood out to me here uh, was in Windows 2000 when Diablo 2 is started, one of the following messages appears. So they're trying to give you advice, again, because it's not like today where you got like live support, you can just tweet at someone, get some help. Uh, they have here, register and you could win cool Blizzard stuff. <laughs> Love to see that, uh, but this is really what we're here for. This is the manual, man. Look at that. It's a literal book. It's insane. And when I say book, I'm not talking about just the thickness of it. I am talking about what's within here because it's not only just the controls and the class breakdowns, but there's a lot of lore in here, which was really impressive to me. So cracking it on open, you're going to see here, this is the tutorial page. Look at that, dude. Absolutely insane with great art here on the side Really really cool touches. I mean look how how much detail is packed into it in the terms of just written detail Normally when I see just tons and tons of pages of words I kind of glaze over it But I'm just impressed at how much time was spent on this at first. It's simple, right? I'm like, oh my god Yeah, well, you know, here's the video options. Here's the auto map configuration. Okay, got it But then you see art like this you just can't help but smile a little bit they break down controlling your character, what all the UI does. Obviously, again, very important for back then when they're establishing what these games are going to be. But it starts to get interesting as we crawl a little bit deeper past using items into getting around town, how you interact with all the townspeople. Because what this game was was a bigger, better Diablo 1, which is what a lot of people wanted. And of course, then you can have eight people online. That was awesome. And uh, vendors are here again. The character attributes and leveling up and gaining skills has been changed a little bit now, which is, is really nice to see because it's got the full skill tree, which is really cool. They explain some of that. And once they get past the multiplayer, here's where it gets cool, is right here. Now we're getting class breakdowns. That is some lore, friend. That is some lore again, friend. I mean, look at that. And I also love how they're clearly like concept photos and you can see the artist sign them. Just a little bit of personality there. Um, they also have for the necromancer, the paladins, and then going into the sorceress. They talk about the skills and abilities and you're going to see after this a breakdown for the Amazon skills and what they can unlock. You can see a breakdown for the Barbarian, and so on and so forth. So again, really in depth on each character. What I love about this is again, you gotta remember, this wasn't go on YouTube and watch a, a build guide real fast. You did the research yourself, and so they really went to a ton of lengths to provide you that type of information to be educated before you make a build because it's it's going down all of the spells uh, that you could potentially unlock and what would speak to you in the early, mid, and late game, which is of course extremely important in Diablo. Um, and then, look at that art there, awesome. But there's a part here that really blew my socks off is they, they go through uh, items that you're gonna loot and they have all the equipment here and little illustrations and uh, drawings and, and models here on the left and right sides of the manual, but it's here. Look at, the, they, they literally put just lore in the back of this here. It's like, the passages contained herein are first-hand accounts on the, of the hunt for the three exiled primevals, Mephisto of Hatred, Ball of Destruction, Diablo of Terror, and uh, yeah, they just have written logs here. Look at all this, dude. I mean, this is all in one singular manual. And you just brush up on all this. Look, look at the two pages of just, of excerpts from Deckard Cain, who of course you see in Diablo 3, which is again for me the one I connect with. They have the World of Sanctuary here on the map. I, I really am just blown away by this. The amount of effort here, breaking down the world, all the creatures you're gonna find in the world and fight, uh, the great deserts of Arnok. Uh, just really impressed with what they have here. And uh, couldn't ask for a better manual if, you, if you're buying this for the first time. And this isn't even like a collector's edition. And then, of course, now we get the, the credits and then a quick reference. And then on the back here, Warcraft 2. One last cool thing for me to show you all. And we'll talk a little bit more about the game. We have a little bit of a product catalog here. What was Blizzard selling back then? They were selling Warcraft 2, Battle.net edition. Check all of that out. 
just a full illustration right here on the bottom. Guess what? Yep, Diablo 2, of course. And then even StarCraft here with the expansion set. So awesome to see. But what's also neat is for those who wanted to get hyped for the next Blizzard game, you also on the other side here, a Warcraft 2, or 3, sorry, poster, uh, which was really, really nice. I mean, I'm not a huge Warcraft fan, quite truthfully. Played a little bit of World of Warcraft, but I went back to RuneScape. But again, just take a bow, Blizzard, take a bow. This is phenomenal stuff here. So that's what you get in a massive complete box copy of Diablo 2. I don't have any nostalgia for this game, and I think this is awesome. So I can only imagine for those of you out there who grew up with this game, who are really excited for the Resurrected remaster, uh, what you thought of all of this. And that was the main thing I really wanted to show in this video, because I was, I was so excited about it. But Diablo 2 is one that I gotta say, bounced off of a bit. When the remaster was announced, I was expecting, I guess more Diablo 3, which I imagine is sacrilege for some people. They're like, oh, dude, Diablo 3 is not that good, man. Again, maybe I'm just a product of where I jumped into the series and, and especially some of the tastes I have with action RPGs, again, with Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance and what we got from Champions Return to Arms. But to me, those games, I, I feel like the, the best of them all was packed into Diablo 3. So I thought Diablo 2 would be more of a fixed camera version of that. And Resurrected does feel like that. Um, but I think... I have to admire some of the difficulty curves here as well because while not as difficult or as unbeatable I felt as Diablo 2, like when you die in Diablo 2, you drop your items. And so you'll see at one point I'm running around with my fists fighting off enemies because I'm trying to make my way to some loot. Um, and then I had to go feel good about myself and I went back to some earlier areas just to get my feet wet because I hadn't played the game uh, since its launch. But I was playing as the assassin, the assassin known as Sly Pooper. And uh, it was just a, a really, really decent romp here. But I just always bounced off the game because I think I do like like Diablo 3's more horde style, more ability focused style with loot vomit, which is usually not like me in games. Like I'm usually not big on like, oh, shower me with loot. But uh, Diablo 2 is a great game, a timeless game at that for many people, especially the eight player multiplayer is so impressive. And I feel like Diablo 4 kind of has that with the more live areas now where you can do events with other players. I think all of that is extremely cool. So you get some of that spirit in the more modern games, but yeah, Diablo 2 is just a bigger, better version of Diablo 1, and certainly for its time, extremely impressive and a big game changer. But the one that I spent the most time with, and the one that we'll talk about for a decent length here, is Diablo 3. We have it here for the Nintendo Switch, the Eternal Collection with all the DLC, because it comes with the Ganondorf outfit. I made a mistake, I, I bought a copy from Canada, so it's got French all over it. I don't have any issue with that type of stuff, but you, you know what, like, I just want that pure American, US made copy. Because I know the value's a little bit higher, and so the collector in me just loses my mind ever so slightly, but I digress. Here is the back of the box where it says the legendary action RPG is here. Play with up to four players offline or online, seven powerful and unique heroes, and all of the Diablo 3 content included with the Necromancer and all the extra content here. And it's on a single cartridge, which is really nice to see. Uh, this game is right at home on Switch, by the way. Like, there is still the big W of Diablo 3 being on the go compared to something like Diablo 4, which I think will be a better game. Because Diablo 3, man, like just, again, those those action RPG mechanics I grew up with in Baldur's Gate are maximized here. Like Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 1 and 2 are games I hold so close to my heart. And I hope one day we can really talk about them on the channel. But Diablo 3, just the, the flow, the loot, it, you know, it's all snappy and it's all forward momentum. You're never slowing down, uh, but there's so much to do, but it never feels overwhelming because you're just going through it at such a rapid pace. And I think it's hitting at the right time. I'm coming off of Tears of the Kingdom, which is a game that I really like, but admittedly because of the slow progress you make per session, I'm slowly falling off of it. I've had like 30 to 40 really good hours with it, but I'm just like, okay, you know. I just want something that I feel like I'm making some sort of progress in, and that's me who has a lot of time for games, and Diablo just scratches that itch perfectly, where I am just constantly getting new loot, equipping it quickly, moving to the next enemy, moving to the next quest, and even the Necromancer, which I never played as, I originally played as the monk in Diablo 3, 
What a cool class, man. Taking out enemies from afar with these bones, and, and then exploding corpses and doing nuclear damage. Just a really great game. And the, the amount of replayability, going run after run after run after run, through all the expansions, all that stuff there. And then doing it again with a new character and re-rolling. It just, there is so much replayability here. And I know a lot of people feel that way about Diablo 2, but for me, Diablo 3, with the way they do loot, with the way they do the dungeons and all that stuff, I just think they really nailed it here when it was all said and done. And so I see a lot of all these Diablo games packed into Diablo 4, and I'm very excited to finally get my hands on this game and see what it's all about, because it's definitely one of my most anticipated of the year, and that beta was super convincing. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I've got for you. These are the Diablo games again, minus what we got going on over on your phones. We're gonna forget about that one. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. I'm excited to see some thoughts on this, because I know some folks, uh, definitely are more old school than I, so maybe they'll have different opinions when it comes to Diablo 1 or 2. Uh, so that's the fun of the conversation. I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts. And with that, I will catch you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.